Hello, this is Blue Star, Defender of Equestria, and this is the next of my character videos. This time we will be covering Princess Luna, Princess of the Night. But actually quite a nice girl. I like her. <laughs> but anyway, I, yes, a lot of people actually like Princess Luna because she's a very identifiable character. She's basically an outsider. She's the person who never fits in, and it's through no fault of her own. I mean, she's simply different. I mean, the she's the princess of the night and ponies appear for the most part to you know be active during the day so she's not gonna have many friends during the night because anybody who might be her friends are asleep and you know the ponies don't do this to be mean or anything it's just you know the ponies are simply you know their nature is to live in the day her nature is to live in the night so mm, she's an immediate conflict there and obviously it's the source of why she becomes into nightmare moon <laughs> I have to say, it's quite difficult to believe that Luna could really be Nightmare Moon. She's so evil when we first meet Nightmare Moon. That Nightmare Moon is definitely, I have come to take over the world and plunge it into eternal darkness. <laughs> and I understand that Luna is obviously very upset. I mean, you know, she was locked away for a thousand years. I think she took that rather well. She's not... She doesn't seem to be angry about the fact that she got locked away for a thousand years. My theory on why that is, is that maybe it's really nice on the moon. Maybe it's not like a jail cell. Maybe there's like a, a moon palace up on the moon. Because as we've seen in a, a Canterlot wedding, you can see that Luna is actually flying from the moon. And, well, if I had been in prison on the moon for a thousand years, I don't think I'd want to go back. But, on the other hand, uh, she was living there for a thousand years, so maybe she maybe it grew in her, maybe she liked the place. Or maybe there's a really nice moon palace there or something that she just kind of hung out there and lived under a kind of like house arrest or something like that. But anyway, she's not so much angry as she is just, you know, I'm going to make things my way now, because... Oh, I've, I've had enough of ponies ignoring me. I'm going to make them listen to me and, you know, show them that night isn't so bad after all and stuff like that. It's probably her motivation. Hmm. Which brings me to an interesting point during uh, Friendship is Magic Part 1 and 2 is, is exactly what is Nightmare Moon trying to do to the main six during the second part of this and that is she trying to kill them? Because if she is, well, first of all, it's sort of a <laughs> violation of the rules of My Little Pony, or at least my unwritten rules of My Little Pony anyway. But yeah, if she's trying to kill the main six, why doesn't she just like appear in front of them and pick them up and throw them off a cliff or something? Well, again, I don't think that's what her, it's, that appears to not be her motivation. Otherwise, that's what she would do. It's like, obviously the story is, is showing the main six and showing what they can do and showing them how they represent each of these elements. But why is Nightmare Moon supporting that? Why is she trying to do that? Hmm. I mean, other than simply, oh, this is really what the writers wanted her to do. But maybe she's testing the main six. Maybe she's perhaps somehow for some reason guiding the main six along up the path maybe to find the elements of harmony themselves because she only directly confronts the um the main six and without outside of her smoke form <laughs> when they actually find the elements of harmony so maybe this is some sort of clever trap by nightmare moon for them to somehow find the elements of harmony for her and uh so that she can go and destroy them. Because obviously when she gets the elements of army, the first thing she does with them is, well, she destroys them. Or she attempts to destroy them. But anyway, that was sort of off topic. But yeah, I think that Luna was never an evil character. I mean, it's easy to look at a character like Luna, especially when the first time we see her as being this evil, ah, ha, 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 I will take over the world kind of a character. But no, I think she's always been quite nice. I mean, obviously the episode that really shows this is... um. Sleepless in Ponyville, it's like, you'd think as Princess of the Night, she'd have better things to do than poke around little kids' dreams and helping them feel better and stuff. Although she says, this is my duty to, uh, to basically help you in your dreams or something like that. So maybe this is part of her job, is to go into other people's dreams and, uh, you know, help them out and help them to grow and learn. Which, in a way, might be a response to her original problem, is that everybody that would she'd be interacting with is asleep. So how do you deal with this problem? Well, you, <laughs> I was going to say, invade their dreams. But I would imagine that if, you know, if, if Luna entered your dream and you did not want her there and you just, you, it's like, no, Luna, this is too personal for me. Please, please go away that she would do that that she i don't think she would force herself on anybody she'd probably say you know i do want to help you and i think that's what her goal is i think she wants to help people she certainly wants to fit in and um, belong and everything because well obviously it must have been rough being on the moon for a thousand years by herself unless of course she had like moon servants or something on the moon which i don't think she did but um yeah luna's a very interesting character because we can all uh 
we all can identify with Luna and what she's going through because we've probably all been Luna at some point. We've all been that person who just never fit in, who didn't belong, who who just didn't know what to do with himself or how to make friends or how to keep them. And but I like her a lot. She seems reasonably strong, and yeah, I mean she's willing to stand up to Celestia. She's not. She doesn't seem subservient to um, Celestia. Although the very first time we see Luna as Luna as sort of like teenage uh like 12 year old luna she's like oh, please don't hurt me celestia because oh. obviously she's just been zapped by the elements of harmony and like you know been sort of like beaten down kind of a thing and now she's looking at celestia all big and powerful and, and strong and everything it's like oh please don't hurt me oh. and i love that moment it's like that moment feels a little silly where it's like i i, I actually missed you a lot sister uh, I missed you so much, please forgive me. <laughs> you know, again, you know, obviously she's just been zapped by the elements of harmony, so her uh, her heart has been changed itself. But yeah, I love that moment. That moment actually does work, even though it seems a little silly. But, you know, they obviously do love and care for each other. You know, the uh, Luna and Celestia just... They just weren't able to figure this to work this out, which is very sad because clearly the both of these princes are meant to definitely be the supervising adults. Uh, Luna in a different way. Luna is certainly um, she is meant to be sort of you know second in command to Celestia, but obviously Luna's meant to rule the night. Celestia's meant to rule the day. But if one of them had to be in charge, yeah, it's it's Celestia. <laughs> you can't have two captains. That's the problem. <laughs> but yeah, I really like her a lot because she's a very identifiable character. And, and people uh, definitely sympathize her with her more because she definitely has a lot less to do with the overall series. I mean, obviously Celestia is guard is guiding Twilight down this path. She um, Celestia actually has in a way more screen time, but Luna has more to actually do and say while she's there. Well, Celestia is really just there to sort of just be uh, just to guide the main six along, give them you know uh, a a beautifully wise phrase or something to say. She really doesn't Luna. On the other hand, she usually interacts with the main six and uh, characters like Scootaloo much more directly on a much more personal level, which again makes her much more identifiable. She feels more like a real person, while Celestia feels like, you know, she just feels like this big ruler that we don't know anything about. She feels out of reach. She feels like on a, a different level, but Luna feels like she's on our level, that we get her, she gets us, and this is why people like her, and I like her, and that she has darkness inside of her both literally and figuratively, but she's really a nice person. She's she's definitely someone you would want to be friends with and just have some fun with and talk with. I mean, obviously we see um, Luna Eclipse that she has a lot to learn when it comes to being friends and making friends with people. And interestingly during that, she um, when we see her get angry, we see how she truly feels. I mean, it's one of those things, I've, again, another great quote from Babylon 5 is, when you want to know what someone really feels, you make them angry. You basically put them in a mode where they drop all their, their shields and their barriers and their politeness, and you get what that, what that person really says. It's like when she tries to save, um, oh, I forgot the name of that kid, but anyway, the, 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 the little kid from <laughs> drowning in the, um, in, the, in the bucket or whatever it is. Um, it's like, you ungrateful whelp! <laughs> I'd feel that way. It's like after, I mean, the kid just says, Ah, I'm being eaten! Help me! Ah! It's like, there's like, oh, you ungrateful whelp! Rawr! I'd be, I'd be mad too with that. I just saved this kid's life and she's, and he's like, he's like all scared and afraid of me and everything. It's like, dang, I'd, I'd be upset by that. And that obviously shows why the Nightmare Moon thing happened a little bit. That no, and it was actually a little scary to see that, that whole next scene of her basically going, of the town going into madness and then she getting all mad and angry because you could see she's sort of going back towards Nightmare Moon, but she doesn't. In this case, the reason is that, ironically, it's because of Twilight. If Twilight had perhaps not intervened, maybe she would have continued on that path back to uh, Nightmare Moon, where she would have been angry and resentful at everybody for basically, you know, disdaining her. Uh, but Twilight shows her, you know what, you know, maybe we can make this work. Maybe we can find a way to use this to our advantage. And that's ultimately what she does. I mean, the interesting thing with in this case is that, yeah, she's trying, in, in the first part of the episode, she's trying to be something that she's not. She's trying to be like everybody else, but she's clearly not. She's Princess of the Night. She, she, She's, you know, she's out of date by a thousand years and stuff, which doesn't make sense. It's like, what, was she, like, unconscious or something on the moon, too? Did she not, like, pay attention to what was going on? But, uh, anyway, different point. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, she's clearly trying to be something that she's not. And as we all know is when you try to be something that you're not, well, you ultimately fail. Because <laughs> if you can't be who you are, you're, you're gonna 
you know, that relationship isn't going to work out because you can't stop being who you are. You have to be who you are. And if your friends can't like you for who you are, then you need to get new friends. And this is sort of what the solution for Luda is, that she realizes that, okay, I can't be like everybody else, but I'm going to be who and what I am. And I'm going to use this to, well, I'm going to use this to my advantage. I'm going to be, I'm going to sort of play along a little bit with this whole nightmare moon thing, uh, nightmare night and all that stuff. And, you know, after that, maybe people will actually realize that, you know, I'm not such a bad person and, you know, I don't want to eat you and kill you and eat you and stuff. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I hope that we get to see a lot more of Luna and get to see her do more things, just like Princess Celestia. But uh, that's, again, that's going to be kind of hard because, again, she's Princess at the night and most of the stories happen during the day. So, hmm. But still, Princess Luna is uh, definitely, uh, if I had to pick, a t pick, obviously, if I had to pick which f did the fans like more, well, obviously it's Princess Lu uh, Luna, people like Princess Luna more than they like Celestia, <laughs> because they don't think that uh, Luna is trying to uh, manipulate Twilight for her own benefit and all that stuff. And we can relate to Luna a lot, and I certainly do, I mean, <laughs> which is probably why during a uh, recording of Blue Star 1, all of a sudden, oh my gosh, it's like Blue Star is like flirting with uh, <laughs> with Luna, or more precisely, Luna is flirting with Blue Star, because they both have a lot in common, <laughs> as I stated several times, I have to admit, that uh, they've both been alone for a long time, they've both don't really fit in, they've all been, you know, they've been basically alone, they just simply haven't had the opportunity or the ability to make lots of friends, and this is why uh, Blue Star uh, likes her, and probably why I think Luna likes him, because Luna can somehow see that in uh, Blue Star, but I think I'm gonna stop now, I must admit, I had to, I had to comment on that, but yeah, I mean, people who haven't uh, listened to my, uh, oh, my fanfic, uh, Blue Star, then uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> So yeah, Luna is definitely a cool character. I like her. Um, I hope we get to see more of her. And I think that she was never evil to begin with. And that she's she's a, actually a nice character. She's just misunderstood. And, you know, she needs a hug once in a while. <laughs> As we all do. <laughs> Remember, Luna, you really are loved. We love you. <laughs> that is the end of my analysis of Princess Luna. This is Blue Star. Stay strong and pony on. Blue Star out.